Shalom. Call Lime La Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rukakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, messengers have been sent. So there was an angel that showed up at GMS LA last Saturday. And these messengers are sent as encouragement to strengthen our faith and to reinforce the Most High is with us, <clears throat> to reassure us that the Most High is with us. And they are sent to convey the Most High's will. So look at this ancient image of this man here. He just has a shine to him. An ancient look of the ancient prophets in the old days. And this is really the best picture that we have of him. And he was standing right behind the camp of GMS LA. And I went and visited those brothers about a year ago. Beautiful brothers down there in LA. Nevertheless, I want to go into the lesson. These angels are sent as signs of judgments to take place. And ultimately, prophecies that are being revealed and are transpiring real time as we speak. And they represent judgments to come, just like the angels visited Lot. Let's go here first. Revelation 15 and one, and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. So spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah is going to be destroyed by that final plague of fire. That's coming. So these messengers represent prophecies being fulfilled, and are sent to convey the will of the Heavenly Father. <clears throat> Let's go here to um, Genesis 19. Genesis 19 and 1, see? And there came two angels to Sodom at evening, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. So these men are lords, gods of the heaven, sent from on high. They help to reassure us. <clears throat> they help to strengthen our faith. Let's go here to, see, I'm going to read a story about the Philistines and Samson. Briefly, Judges 13 and 1, and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. When we read these stories, we're in a conglomeration of these kingdoms, the Philistines, the Moabites, the Amorites, the Ammonites, the Amalekites, so forth and so on, in that melting pot, the daughter of Babylon. So these messengers are starting to reveal themselves in human form. And there was a certain man of Zerah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. 
Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Signs of deliverance when we see these messengers. And we have the prophets on the scene teaching, which are saviors. When we read Obadiah, verse 21. And then there's another precept in Nehemiah 9, if I'm not mistaken. Saviors. Let's see if I can find that. So we're seeing early warning signs of saviors being warned and reassured and prepped for the prophecies to be fulfilled of judgment of the wicked and our enemies and the deliverance of the Lord's, of the Lord's elect. Nehemiah 9 and 27, Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies who vexed them, and in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven, and according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. So that's going to happen again. We know whenever we read the Bible, it's like a record of music or a sheet of music. It's replayed over and over again on earth. See? So we're in the hands of our enemies today. The Midianites, the Amorites, the Ammonites, the Amalekites, Philistia, the Philistines, the Moabites. See? So these messengers are sent to show us signs that the Most High is with us, that he has heard our cries and pleas. Let's go here. The men of the Lord are saviors and also messengers. So these are our brothers. <clears throat> um, Judges 13 and 6. And then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told me his name. Because they're just here to reassure us, strengthen us in our faith. They're not trying to be boys or buddies, you know, buddy, buddy. And they don't want to be worshipped. They're here for a specific time, purpose, and cause. And ultimately are conveying a message that Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, is with us. Those that fear him. Let's go here. Psalms 85, verse 8, or 7. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. So the Lord is near those that call on him in truth and sincerity and fear his holy name. How many angels showed up to IUS, ISUPK, IUIC? Um, I'll wait. But I don't want to hold my breath because I won't make it till tomorrow. 
So these messengers are sent to reassure us in our walk. What has been will be again, and there is no new thing under the sun. They've always came to the, the sons of Jacob and to Abraham and Isaac, the sons of God. Let's go to Daniel 10 and 4. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hedekel, then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz, whose loins was girded with fine gold of Euphaz. Look how buff this man looked. A warrior. Could be Gabariah Allah, Gabariah Allah, or Gabriel. A warrior of God. Daniel 10 and 6. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude spoke with authority. See, Yahweh Shai is the main angel of the Lord. Yahweh Shai showed up to Joshua with a sword in his hand, Wait a minute. It says, like in color. Let's read it again. Daniel 10 and 6. His body was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And how was shy? Look at that. Like in color to polish brass. Let's look up polish brass. Well, we see it right here in this image. Before the gainsayers and naysayers. Let's look it up. Well, look at this. I just did a simple Google search for polish brass. Look at this. So the angels are our brothers. Yasha Allah. He, he is a prince of the power. Here's another one. So-called black men, these angels, are our brothers. And Esau, they're getting ready to tear you up. About three years ago, I had a vision that these so-called UFOs or chariots of the Lord landed. And I begin to join alongside them and fight. See, look at this. Now these statues are from Benin. These are Israelites in that Northwest African nation, Benin. Many of them are Levites. See these statues? Can't make this up. Let's go back. So these are our brothers, angels, messengers. Let's go to Luke, a story about um, John the Baptist's father, Zechariah. I'm not going to read all that. just want to get to the key points. So these angels serve as heralds, ambassadors, messengers. Luke 1 Right here, the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 11. Let's go to 10. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Now remember, our labors is like a burnt offering unto the Lord as well. 
So these angels are showing up on the Lord's altar, the platforms of teaching here in America. Matter of fact, let's see if I can remember where this is at. Um, I think it's right here. Yeah, let's get it. Yeah, right here. Surat 35, verse 6. The offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat, and the sweet savor thereof is before the Most High. Let's read it again. The offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat, and the sweet savor thereof is before the Most High. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable, and the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. So these messengers are showing us that our sacrifices are acceptable. <clears throat> Let's go back to Luke. Book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 11. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fell, and fear fell upon him. Remember what we read in Judges 13 and 6. These angels are terrifying to look upon. No joke. <clears throat> Judges 13 and 6. And this is the wife of Manoah. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. Look at this image again. Can't make this up. Let's go back. Zechariah, I mean, excuse me, Salakia, Luke, Luke 1 and 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh or John. Some brothers say Yahweh but anyway, so reassurance that our sacrifice is acceptable. Our prayers are heard. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Let's jump down to verse See, this reminds me of, um, yeah, 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 yep. Let's get to the key point. I'm not going to make this long. Right here. Luke 1 and 18. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering, said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. Let's look up glad tidings. Gabriel Allah, or warrior of God, warrior of power. Gabriel, Gabriel Allah, Gabriel. Let's get this um, good tidings <clears throat> in the Greek. In the Greek, what's the Greek word? Yuan <sighs> Galizo. Yuan Galizo. Which is good news. Good news. The gospel of good news. Hey, that gets into our deliverance of the Lord's elect and judgment of 
the wicked, our enemies, in the New Testament use especially of the glad tidings of the coming kingdom of God and of the salvation to be obtained in it through Hamashiach and of what relates to this salvation. So remember, the Bible says that the elect of Israel shall be saved. Yep, that's the spirit. We're going to go from rags to riches. And our brothers are here to reassure us that our, our offerings are acceptable. Our sacrifices are acceptable. Let's get this one. All right. I want to go ahead and get rid of the clothes out. Let's go to Judges. I'm going to uh, Gideon. Once I learn how to spell, we'll go to Judges. All right, let's just do it this way. Should be six. Judges six. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to close out here. book of Judges, chapter 6. Let's go to verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And we know seven represents completion. All of these stories are conglomerated or combined into the daughter of Babylon the last major captivity which represents our enemies on steroids, the Midianites, the Philistines, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, the Amalekites, you see? So when we're reading all these stories, they all come together in the final culminating event, the daughter of Babylon and the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds, became peasants, wanderers among the nations. And so it was when Israel, and so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them, and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come into Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. See, this beautifully connects to the daughter of Babylon that Moses talked about where Rome would rob us, spoil us. See? Deuteronomy 28. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 18. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Can't make this up. Let's jump down to verse 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. That's literal, and it also represents the daughter of Babylon. Peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. The melting pot. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. See? Can't make this up. Let's go back to Judges. 
So everything ends in the last kingdom under Rome, a rebirth of the reign of terror from our enemies, <clears throat> led by Edom. Judges 6, verse 5. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel Cry unto the Lord. So the elect is doing that now. Crying unto the Lord. In the land of our captivities. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. So remember, the modern Egyptians are Edomites when we read Romans chapter 9. So we can see how this comes together in a rebirth of the Roman leadership structure, their kingdom. And I said unto you, I am the Lord, your God, Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. And that's even unto this day. The Israelites are rebellious. And this is why Zechariah 13, verse 8 and 9 must take place to get rid of these rodents, rebels. And I said unto you, I am the Lord, your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Here's where I wanted to go right here, verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was an Oprah that pertained unto Joash, the Aborazite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. So we're being confirmed. The Lord, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, is with us. These angels represent confirmation or signs of an acceptable sacrifice. Judges 6 and 11, there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was an Oprah that pertained unto Joash the Abrazite and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Gideon might be one of the brothers there in GMS LA. And the Most High is amazing. Might be one of the brothers in GMS LA, Gideon. Verse 13. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us from Egypt?
But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And this reminds me of Malachi 1 and 4. You see, the Lord says, I have loved you, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? We're still at the bottom. But when we study the scriptures, it takes humility before honor, suffering patiently for the eternal reward. Verse 14, and the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? So saviors are being raised up even in these last days. Close out, close out here. <clears throat> Nehemiah 9, verse 26, or 25. And they took strong cities and a fat land and possessed houses full of all goods, wells digged, vineyards and olive yards and fruit trees in abundance. So they did eat and were filled and became fat and delighted themselves in thy great goodness. The Israelites. Let's keep going. Let's go to verse 27. I'm not going to make this long at all. Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies who vexed them, and in the time of their trouble. When they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven, and according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors, who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. Beautiful. So the Lord is going to do this again. And these messengers, these angels, speak to that confirmation that our prayers are heard. Our sacrifices are acceptable. And the Lord's tender mercies is being bestowed upon his beloved. Hopefully this, hopefully this lesson has been edifying. Our praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Kadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. So we're seeing signs and we're seeing confirmation that the Lord is hearing our cries for deliverance, for mercy. And we are closer than what we can perceive in our own mind. The Bible says in Romans 13, it's high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Plum Yeshua and the Bob the Bow. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom, Barakatham, Shalom.